I feel Jesus really, really good right now. And I just, I feel like the Lord wants to speak to us in an amazing fashion. So I'm going to share my heart with you for the next 45 minutes. And then we're going to sing and pray like crazy. And God's going to move. Let me give you a couple of things. If you would go in your mind with me back to the end of, the, like the last quarter of 2019. So we're looking at October, November, December of last year, right? Prophets all over. What were they declaring? 2020, year of vision. 2020, year of insight. 2020, year of clarity. You know, it's going to be this amazing year. And everybody was talking about this amazing year of 2020. And today, we reached the halfway point of 2020. Right? Am I right? Today's the halfway point. And you look back at 2020, and most of you would go, because <laughs> it's not been that great of a year. I mean, come on, it's been crazy. And pandemics and, and, and racial tensions and all the craziness that's been going on around us. And, and, and now, now we have some kind of sandstorm the size of the United States coming, just in case you wouldn't need to be encouraged. Uh, so, so, so. But in the midst of all that, we look and we think, what the world? Am I right? Because that's what I'm, I'm like, okay, Lord, what happened all the, because so, a lot of these prophetic guys are friends of mine, and I'm, like, they're, they're amazing prophetic guys, and I'm thinking, Lord, did they miss it? He said, no, they were spot on. And I thought, wow. And I just began asking God, talk to me. Lord said, it is a year of vision. But vision always requires exposure. And what I just said, what happened? Exposure took place. We began to find out that maybe we're controlled more by the media than we are by the Bible. Exposure was happening. And what was happening was we began to find out oh, we can be controlled by fear. Uh, and a lot of people were, and I'm not talking about not, I'm not talking about just outside the church. I'm talking about in the body of Christ. We began to find out that, that maybe, maybe there were some things inside of us that we had to take a look at. We could be manipulated by the media. And, 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 and I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to paint a harsh picture, but we even had to take a look. Come on, we'll just talk about it. We had to look at our own self and turn on the camera inside. And maybe, maybe we were all finding that we might have had some blind spots when it came to racism and some racial tensions and the things that we didn't even know existed. And, and so we had to search our hearts like David. I, I don't know about you, but I was praying, search me and try me and know my heart today, God, because I, I want to be pure and I want to be right. And, and so, so all this stuff that we've had that's been going on around us was actually maybe exposing stuff that we didn't even realize because you can't have 2020 vision if you don't first have exposure. So things were happening and spinning and and I said, wow, Lord, I, I, I didn't see it like that. So maybe it has been a year of vision, clarity, and insight. We found the COVID-19 pandemic hit. And it's been crazy. And then there's upticks and all the things, and you guys know what's going on in the world around us. And, 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 and you know what? I'm just going to talk real plain, and I can, because it's my pulpit. No, <laughs> I'm just... But in the midst of that, I want to share with you, I actually believe a lot of the numbers might have been hyped and there's some things that are probably a little bit crazy and maybe we don't have all the facts in yet and maybe it might be another 10 years till we have all the facts, but here's the reality. There was and is a real virus. I mean, there's a real virus. This thing is very real. And guess what? People really died. People really did die. But I want to ask you a question to think with me. How did they die? And I know there's lots of stories out there. Here's the reality. It was a respiratory disease, a respiratory virus, and fluid got in the lungs, and then the fluid got hardened. And when the fluid got hardened, it restricted their ability to breathe. And when the people were dying, you know what they were saying? I can't breathe. And then we have the terrible, tragic death of a man with a knee on his neck Restricting his breathing and the cry of George Floyd went worldwide. What did he say? I can't breathe. Do you think that's a coincidence? Because when I saw that, I said, God, that's not a coincidence. The destruction of COVID-19 was to restrict their ability to breathe. The death of George Floyd, which created the racial tensions that we've, that we've encountered, 
was because there was a restriction of his breathing and a cry, I can't breathe. And I said, God, you're up to something. I said, Lord, you're up to something. There's more to this. God, what are you doing on the earth? Tell me. I want to know. And that's where, my, that's where my prayer went. That's where my heart went. And I said, God, I want to understand better. I want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. God, speak to us. What are you doing on the earth? Because, listen, I've prayed enough prayer saying, God, this is what we're going to do. Come join us. I've been praying for a long time now. God, what are you doing, and how can I join you? And, Lord, we can't see this kind of a, of a national calamity going on and see the similarities between the two pictures now and not say, God, you're, not, you're, you're up to something. Tell me what's happening. I want you to see this, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I think it's verse 49, if I remember right, 46. 1 Corinthians 15, 46. Look at this verse. So I think it's a powerful verse. It says, however, the spiritual is not first, but the natural. And afterward, the spiritual. What's he saying? You see it in the natural, then it's in the spiritual. Everybody understand that? He's given us principles of how God moves on the earth. And when we see something happening in nature, we know there's something going on in the spirit. So what we're seeing in the natural is a cry that says, I can't breathe. Which tells me in the spirit, God is up to something. I said, okay, Lord, what are you doing? And how do we partner with you? Because God, you're telling us something here. He took me to Ezekiel 37. So go ahead and turn there. And all my Bible scholars said, Ezekiel 37, it's the valley of dry bones. You're good. <laughs> it is the valley of dry bones. But I want you to see with me if you can. So turn to Ezekiel, chapter 37, and let's start a run and see what the Lord will speak to us. Is that okay? He said, the hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. All right, let's talk. God takes Ezekiel in the spirit, and he brings him to a valley that's full of dry bones. Now, these are human bones. There's femurs and tibias and humeruses and radiuses and skulls and all kinds of things and rib cages and, and it's a valley. And it's a, it, this is a, I don't know about you, but this is a desolate picture in my world, right? I actually had Nicole making a graphic and, and, and we started looking at pictures and, and in the picture, I mean, some of the pictures were very like, I said, we can't put that out there. It's like too scary. But I, it was, I, he said it, it was too halloween -y. I'm like, no, I don't go there. I, I don't even think it that way. Here, here's where we're at. In the midst of this, I want you to be, put on Ezekiel's sandals if you can and start to think with me as he's standing in the valley. And then if you can read it, what happened is God actually took him on a trip all the way around the valley. Why? Wow. He doesn't want him to just see a small picture. He wants him to see the big picture. Can I tell you, when God's moving in your life, don't just look for the small picture. Look for the big picture. God's doing, oftentimes God's doing more. Can I say something to you? It's not just about what's happening in your world. It's about what's happening in his. Oh, that was good, actually. Sometimes when we're, when, when we're together on outings, we'll go out with Dean and Sue, and sometimes Dean will say to Lori, it's not all about you, Lori. <laughs> and, I, and I think about this stuff as they play back. Back and forth, they, they have this ongoing banter. In the midst of that, can I tell you something? Ezekiel had to understand it's not about the small picture, it's about the big picture. Can I tell you something? There's a bigger picture going on right now. There's a bigger picture going on. So he took them all around, caused me to pass by them all around. And there were many bones, right, in the open valley. And watch what he said. Indeed, they were very dry. What's that mean? They've been there a while in the sun, baking. I, I, I want you to understand that what we're faced with in the world today and all the situations, that, this isn't something that caught God off guard. This isn't something that happened overnight. We've been building to this hour. But if you remember when Pastor Dan shared that prophetic word, we need to celebrate the idea that we're alive in this season. 
This is a good season to be alive. Why? Because God's up to something more and there's a bigger picture than what you might have known. And God's up to something. And in the midst of that, watch. Ezekiel passes around this valley and he sees this and the bones were very dry and God starts a conversation with Ezekiel. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? That's a strange question. Can these bones live? Because in the natural, you'd look at that and say, there's no way. But he knows he's not in the natural, he's in the spirit and God's moving. So Ezekiel knows there's only one right answer and he came up with it. What did he say? Lord, you know. <laughs> only you know, God, whether these bones can live or not. Because in, in, in our finite mind, right, there's no way they could. But God's way beyond our comprehension. Can I talk to you? You can look at your circumstances or situation in life, whatever it might be, and you might say, oh, well, under these circumstances, uh, this would happen. But guess what? If you're in God, you're never under your circumstances. You're above those circumstances. Uh, Ephesians 2 and 6 tells me I'm seated with him in heavenly places, and I can't be seated with him in heavenly places and be under my circumstances because those two thoughts don't even coordinate. So he says, oh, Lord God, you know because I don't know. It's okay to not know. I love what Chanel sang out in the spirit for a little while, a little bit ago. I just want to be like Mary. I don't have questions and I don't need answers. I just want to sit at your feet. <laughs> I, I, I don't have questions and I don't need answers. I, I just want to sit at your feet. That was so right on. Oh. Son of man, can these bones live? Oh, Lord God, you know. Watch what he says. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, surely I'll cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I'll put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you'll know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel, I need you to prophesy to the dry bones. That's a desolate picture. And now you've got a man prophesying to a bunch of skeletons. I don't know if you're tracking with me. But he said, when you speak, I'll breathe. Oh, I don't know if you got what I just said. <laughs> Can these bones live? Not without breath. But when you speak, I'll cause breath to come into them. Walk with me a little further. Let me read a little more, then I'm going to preach like a wild man. I want to tell you right now, first three roads, you'll need an umbrella. It's going to get splashy. <laughs> but I just feel Jesus in the room. I want you to see what happens. He said, I'll, I'll, I'm going to put sinews on you, bring flesh on you, cover you with skin. I'm going to put breath in you and you'll live, and you'll know that I am the Lord. That's what he told him to prophesy. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling. I love suddenlies. <laughs> and the bones came together bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. The skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Woo! Glory to God. Do you have the movie playing in your head? Because you can't read that stuff and not get the movie in your head. Son of man prophesied to these bones. And he begins to prophesy to them as he was commanded. And all of us, and I love this. And suddenly there was a rattling. Whew. Can I tell you something? We are set up for a suddenly. The whole earth right now. I'm not talking about just the United States. I'm talking about Italy. I'm talking about all through Europe. I'm talking about Australia and Asia, Africa. God's up to something right now. Nicaragua, Honduras. 
I, I, I've got friends in all these places and we've been talking back and forth and Zoom's an awesome thing and Facebook Messenger and, and whatever. And, and I want you to know the whole world is poised for a move of God. I believe those dry bones, and I understand that they represented Israel, and I understand all that, but, but I'm looking at it today, and the Lord's speaking to my heart saying, this is where we're at in the world right now. The situation might look desolate, and all I need is somebody to prophesy. Because, listen, <laughs> I don't want to talk to the church right now. God could have moved supernaturally on dry bones without Ezekiel but he chooses to work through human agents like you and I. And when I read this, what I, what, I, what I heard the Lord saying was that until Ezekiel prophesied, I can't move. But once Ezekiel spoke, my breath started to come. And all God needed was somebody to prophesy so he could bring. Because what I heard the Lord saying was, until I have somebody that will speak my word, I can't breathe. Oh, God said, I can't breathe until somebody begins to prophesy my word. And, and I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying, I need somebody who will stand for me. I need somebody who will prophesy my words. I want you to see what Ezekiel did because if you read it, what he said is, I prophesied just as I was commanded. Did you read what I read? He didn't prophesy what he heard on CNN. Come on. Because there's too much of the church that's speaking CNN rather than G-O-D. I started reading this more and more and I felt like what the Lord was saying, God's looking for somebody to prophesy the land to speak so he can breathe on our communities, to make declarations in our community and change the atmosphere where we live. Somebody that'd be willing to stand in Gettysburg on the 4th of July and declare the word of the Lord. We've got to declare the word of the Lord. Whew. We've got to declare what God was saying. I sit with people sometimes, and please hear this, I'm not being critical at all. Please hear it, I'm not being critical. But sometimes I hear a lot of fear in the body of Christ. And what I hear them speaking is what they heard on the news, not what they read in their Bible. And I believe as Christians, we ought to be declaring the word of the Lord, not the word of the commentator on the news. I believe, listen, I'm not talking about sticking your head in the sand and being like an ostrich and not knowing what's going on. It's okay to know what's going on. Why? So you know how to fight. When Paul talked about fighting the battle against the enemy, he said we're not ignorant of his devices. Why? Because we know what he's up to. And you can't know what he's up to if you're not informed. I don't think there's a problem being informed. I think the problem is when we're more, when we're more directed by that information than this information. Coming back to this, watch this. Verse 7, once again, I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, who hears me? Did you see what he just said? As I prophesied, there was a noise. Oh, oh. I'm about to bust. It's going to get ugly. <laughs> as I prophesied, there was a noise. And suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I, the movie's playing in my head, I'm sorry, but, but I'm watching bones and a, and a femur from here and a humerus from there and a radius from there and, and a skull and a rib cage and things just coming together. And, I, and all of a sudden, and if you're Ezekiel, I don't care if, who, how spiritual you are, that's freaky. <laughs> and all, oh, all these bones coming together. Muscle coming on them, flesh covering it. Whew. I'll say it. He wasn't worried what color the flesh was either. It just started all coming together. And, and you know what verse 8 says? Look, throw verse 8 up there because it's powerful. Why don't you see this? I looked, sinners of flesh came upon them. The skin covered them. But they still ain't alive because there's no breath. Why? Because until God breathes, there's only death. 
I read Ezekiel 37 and paralleled it to Genesis. Because when God formed man, right, took dirt and, and, and forms man, but I'm going to tell you something about the forming of man. Ain't nothing happening until God breathes into man. Come here, Dave. I didn't plan this. Oh, we're going to do this right. Lay down on the ground. <laughs> on your back. <laughs> that was perfect right here. <laughs> I wish I had a rosary beads. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> God takes dirt and forms a man. And he forms the man. And as he, as he takes man, I'm going to stand you up now. He's forming the man, and the man's being formed. And as the man's coming together and form, the man's in front of God. But he still ain't a man until what? Until God <sighs> breathed into his nostrils. The breath of life. I know we're COVID-19. Don't worry. <laughs> but at the moment God breathes into man, man became a living soul, which means he wasn't living until God breathed. So when Adam got breath and came alive, his first thought, his first waking moment is a face-to-face -face encounter with God. Because we're created to be face to face with him. And when breath came, life came. Those dry bones, when they came together, and skin and, and muscle and all that stuff happens, it's all there, but there's no breath in them until somebody partners with God. Thanks, buddy. We're good. That'll preach. You're supposed to be a dead man. <laughs> dead to myself but alive to Christ in the midst of that once you see this because I think it gets real strong right here he said to me prophesy to the breath verse 9 prophesy son of man say to the breath thus says the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe on these slain that they may live. Everybody see it? Breathe on them. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit. Do you know what our nation needs? A fresh breath. We need a fresh breath. But the breath didn't come till the next verse. Why? Because the next verse starts out in verse 10. So I prophesied. What happened? All we got is Ezekiel coming in alignment with what God told him to do. God wants to work through human agents. So God was moving, and what you need to understand and see, because to me it's so powerful, is that Ezekiel is just doing and responding to what God is saying, but as he's responding to what God is saying, God's moving, and so he prophesied as he commanded, and then breath came. And they lived. In my Bible, I underlined, and they lived. When Ezekiel prophesied, Breath came and bones lived. And they stood on their feet an exceeding great army. I believe the breath of God is breathing on this land. And God is simply looking for a people that will stand with him in their communities and prophesy the breath of heaven and prophesy the breath of God. They'll stand on the square in Hanover. We did prayer on the square last Saturday. We're going to do it again July 25th. You can mark your calendar. You need to be there. Why? Because we're going to prophesy the breath of God. If revival in America has to start in Hanover, I'm okay with that. We need God. We need God to move. We need God to breathe on our land once again. And, and I really feel like what he's speaking to me right now is who's going to stand and declare and make declarations and partner with God in changing atmospheres. Ezekiel 26, right? You can back up a few chapters, right? Or 22, right? 22, just back up a couple chapters. Let me show you real quick. I didn't know if I was going to go here or not, so I got it in parentheses. God's talking about, about Israel's wicked leaders. He said, her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. 
They've not distinguished between the holy and the unholy, nor have they made my name known, my name known, the difference between the unclean. Have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean? They've hidden their eyes from my Sabbath so that I'm profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey to shed blood to destroy people and get dishonest gain. Her prophets plastered them with untempered mortar, seeing false visions, divining lies for them, saying, thus says the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken, they said God said when God didn't say, right? The people of the land have used oppression, committed robbery, mistreated the poor and needy. They've wrongly oppressed the stranger. So I sought for a man among them who would make up a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I would not destroy it, but I found no one. Anybody see it? You know what God was looking for? Gap standers. You know what God's looking for in America today? Gap standers. Those that would actually stand in the gap. Those that would actually declare the word of the Lord even when it's not popular. Oh, I said that out loud. Those that would be willing to put it on social media even if you thought you might lose friends. Oh my gosh, I can't say that. They'll unfriend me. <laughs> Boy, there's persecution. <laughs> That's awful. I lost four friends. They weren't your friends. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, can I say this? If you're their friend, you would tell them the truth. You wouldn't patsy around with them. God, teach us. I'm just being real right now. I look for a man to stand in the gap. I don't know about you, but this week on my face before the Lord, I've been saying, God, I'll stand in the gap. I'll declare your word. I don't care if it costs me. We're, we need to declare the word of the Lord. We need to be okay with the idea that, you know what? This is what God said. But science, nah, science thinks they're smarter than God. Science always thought they were smarter than God. There was a scientist who thought he was smarter than God, and he challenged God. He said, God, we can even make babies now. We've learned how to make babies in a test tube. We're as smart as God. And God said, okay, let's go for it. So God said, go ahead, make a baby. Do it on your own. He said, we can do it without you, God. He said, okay, do it, go for it. So the scientists went outside, started to gather up dirt. God said, nah, -uh, get your own dirt. Here's where I'm at. Job 22. Can we talk? How many understand that God's looking for some people that will declare the word of the Lord? That are willing to declare God's word. And the enemy's trying to silence you. You go through the major cities right now. As a matter of fact, in I, I, Pastor Rick, a lot of you know Pastor Rick, He'll be with us in a couple weeks, by the way. He's coming, coming home July 8th. Glad to have my buddy home. Be with me. We're going to tag team preach that Sunday, two weeks from now. But in the state of Texas, he told me that as of Friday night, midnight, if you're going out in the public, you have to wear a mask. It's become state mandated again because they had an uptick. So everybody's got to wear a mask. And I even thought about that, and please, I'm not, I'm not, this isn't about mask and not mask. I'm not talking about that. I'm simply saying this, as God's telling us to declare his word, I believe the enemy's trying to put a mask on us. And that's not a, that's not, that's not a health thing. That's a, that's a spirit thing, if you follow what I'm saying. Why? Because the enemy would love to silence the body of Christ. And I feel like there's just a place where we have to be able to declare, you know what, I'm going to speak God's word, and I'm going to declare it. Why? Because I believe that it's in your declaration that heaven moves. Job 22, turn to this if you would, and I want to throw it up on the walls because I think we need to see this and understand what actually he's saying, right? Because we want to be in tune with what God's doing. And this is something the Lord spoke to me about while we were, while, while we were praying. 26 through 28, 22 verses 26 through 28. For then you and lift up your faith. 
to him and he'll hear you and you will pay your vows. And you will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. What did he say? You declare. Actually, he didn't say he would declare a thing. He actually said you would declare a thing. Why? Because you've been praying and you're in communion with him. And when you're praying, spending time with him in communion with him, you now carry the mind of Christ. And what you're declaring is what he's saying. And I believe that when we're in that quiet place, in that secret place with him, and he's speaking to us, now we speak and the word of the Lord goes forth. And when a thing gets declared, God said, I'll make it happen. But he said, you have to declare it so he can make it happen. And I honestly believe what the Lord's speaking to me right now is the body of Christ has been silenced. Controlled by fear, science, the media. And God is saying it's time for my people to rise and speak their voice. That in the midst of all the fake news, there's still good news. And God's got good news. We're coming out better, stronger, sharper, wiser than we were when we went in. I promise you the prophets were right about 2020. It's a year of insight. It's a year of clarity. It's been a year of exposure so far. But I promise you what I heard in my spirit, in, the, in my study, the latter half of the year is going to be a whole lot better than the former because we're coming out stronger. You get tried in the fire, but the impurities get burned out. God's doing some things. If you remember, I talked to us about this because when we, when we started coming back together, the first thing I said is don't forget the lessons we learned when we were under house arrest. <laughs> if you would. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. In the midst of that, God's doing something. And I feel like that's really a strong thing. Do you understand what he said? You'll declare a thing and it'll be established. Why? Because you're called to be laborers together with God, not just for God. Do you understand that? Laborers with God not just for God. Listen, I spent a lot of my years working for God. Now I'm working with Him. It's a lot better to work with Him than for Him. And I feel like that's what the Lord's saying is, I'm looking for some people that will just work with me, right? What are you declaring over your city? What are you saying over your town, your community, your family? What is it that we're actually speaking? Are we just agreeing with CNN and repeating what we heard on the news? Or are we declaring the victory of Jesus Christ? I, I don't know about you, but I live in a world that says he ought to get everything he paid for. What if the church actually rose up and the virus was more afraid of the church than the church was of the virus? Listen, man, hell's on a rampage. I've been looking for this time since I got born again. Because I believe things are happening. I believe things are spinning faster than we might even realize. And all I can tell you is this, and it's so in my heart right now. Remember that I've preached this for the last eight years in this house. The dividing line is becoming more and more defined. You're either for me or you're against me. You're either gathering to me or you're scattering from me. I won't stop preaching that because I see it more and more now than I ever have. And God is challenging us. Will we rise? Are we going to be controlled by the media and the mindset of the public? Or are we going to be controlled by heaven and the word of the Lord? And I'm not, please hear this. This is not a political message at all. This is simply saying this, where are you getting your marching orders? Are we spending time with God? Because if I spend one hour in my Bible, but five hours watching the news, I'm going to be confused. Do you understand what I just said? I don't mind knowing what's going on, but I better be spending more time in the Word than I am in the TV. And I'm right. And I'm challenging us, church, we need to do this well in this hour. This is a, this is a very separating time right now. And we have to ask ourselves, are we hearing from heaven? Because if the church hears from heaven, we have the solution. But if the church doesn't hear from heaven, we just have to gain from science. And I think God's bigger than that. And so I'm challenging you today. Listen to what I preached to you about Ezekiel. Ezekiel heard the word of the Lord, got carried by the Spirit into a desolate situation and began to prophesy what heaven was saying and the desolate situation became alive. If we hear from heaven, we can change the culture. 
if we don't hear from heaven, we'll blend in with culture. Do you understand what I just said? I can't afford that. I've, I've come too far. So I start to read this stuff, and it speaks to me volumes. We've got to declare God's words over our family, over our nation, over the people. God wants to do something, church. And he's looking for men and women like you and I that will actually stand up, be accounted, and say, God, we want you. Go with me to Mark chapter 16. Because we declare the end of the chapter a lot, but I want to show you a couple of things before the end of the chapter that I think are absolutely vital. Mark 16, start at verse 15. Watch what he says. Because this is strong. But if we get it, it's life-changing. He said to them, so this is now written in red, because the red stuff's really important. If you only have a little time to read your Bible, read the red stuff, it's really good. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I guess that's all we need right there. The word for gospel is actually taken from the Greek, euon galion. And it literally translates good news. What do you say? Preach the good news. There's good news. I, I think it's amazing that it's called the good news. Do you know what the world needs right now? Good news. You know what Jesus said? Do go preach good news. Tell the people there's good news. Preach the gospel to every creature. Now, keep reading. Watch what he says. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who doesn't believe will be condemned. Those are strong words. He who believes. This is where the rubber meets the road. The word believe. The word believe there lends itself to this concept. You've made a life-altering decision. If you're a believer but your life wasn't altered, you don't fit the biblical definition here. And the word saved is sozoed, and that's a whole nother word. But what I want us to understand is this. Just because you said you believe doesn't make you a believer. The word believe lends itself to now you have made a life-altering decision, which means you can't keep living like you used to live. This brings us back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Which means you can't keep living your old lifestyle saying that you're a believer. Do you understand what I just said? It doesn't mean you're perfect when you get saved. Matter of fact, you can be saved a long time and you, you, you might still be making some challenges. I mean, come on. I can simply say, all the perfect people, please stand. And I'm the only one standing. <laughs> Never mind. Just mess. In the midst of that, what I want to challenge us with is this, because I think we need to get this. When I said yes to Jesus, I was saying no to my old life. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not, which means you don't change your life, you're under condemnation. Right? So we have to understand that. Now, in the midst of that, watch the next verse, okay? Because verse 17 then says, these signs will follow them that believe. What's it say? In my name, they'll cast out devils. Why? Because that's where your real battle is. Did we not hear the word of the Lord this morning that people are never your enemy? But, but the demons that are actually inciting those people to sin is where your battle is. So you're not fighting a physical battle, you're fighting a spiritual one. And your job as a believer is to cast out demons, right? They'll speak with new tongues. That's awesome. Come on, that's the Holy Spirit. Then keep watching. He says this about you laying your hands, right? They'll lay their hands on the sick and they'll recover. Who believes that? Now, I forgot they'll take up serpents. Man, I don't like that part. I don't like snakes at all. But when I read that, sometimes I think that might mean two-legged. Never mind. And if they drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. They'll lay their hands on the sick and the sick will recover. What? These signs will follow what? Them that believe. 
Why? Because it's what we're called to. Why? Because you've been empowered from on high. But the way that happens is we have to choose to partner with heaven. Because in your own flesh, you can't lay your hand on the sick and they recover. In your own flesh, you can't drink any deadly thing and it not hurt you. In your own flesh, you better not try casting out demons. It didn't work well for the seven sons of Sceva. That's a Bible thing. It's, it's all right. I want us to see and understand what I just read to you because to me it's important that we get it. But let's look at the next two verses. After the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and he sat down at the right hand of God. Now watch. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. Did you catch it? He didn't say the Lord working for them. He said the Lord working with them. I so believe in my heart that what God's looking for is simply saying, is there anybody I can work with? Is there anybody that's willing to take a stand? Is there anybody that's willing to actually step out and start declaring the word of the Lord? Is there anybody that's willing to step out and lay their hands? Is there anybody that's willing to confront the demonic entities that are challenging our state, our country, our nation? Is there anybody that's willing to actually prophesy so the breath of God can breathe on our nations? Is there anybody that's willing? Come on, because I'm going to say something to you. Put Ezekiel sandals on one time. You're carried by the Spirit to this valley of dry bones, and then God says, prophesy to dead bones. That seems like a strange day. Come on, that seems like a tough challenge. That seems like a task that maybe you're not, like, I ain't up for that. Who wants to, who wants to speak to dead bones? Because that seems like an odd request from heaven. Am I right? But you know what he did? So I did as the Lord commanded me. They went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. And then he confirmed the word. Why? Because they simply did what God asked them to do. Does anybody understand what I'm preaching this morning? Because God's looking for a people that aren't afraid and aren't ashamed, that will actually declare the word of the Lord. That even if it's not popular, I'm going to talk to us really, really plain. Man. I'm 60 years old. When, when I was born 60 years ago, men were putting up big tents and people were attracted to large tent meeting revivals. And you had guys like A.A. A. Allen and Jack Coe and, and R.W. Shamba. Brother Shamba, won't somebody run around this tent? That's what he used to say. <laughs> and they just put up a tent in the field and people would drive for hundreds of miles to come. And old Brother Hagen and some of them, they to, and they would come and great men of God like Gary Bailey put up tents and, and they would do amazing things. And, and in the midst of that, what happened? People came out in droves. And they fell on their face before God and they saw healings and signs and wonders. Something happened. Somewhere, people began to get intellectual. I'm afraid. I'm afraid our intellectuality has challenged our spirituality. But I want us to understand something. God wants to breathe. I believe the breath of God wants to move in our land. But until Ezekiel prophesies, God can't breathe. And the bones stay dead. But when Ezekiel began to prophesy, I love the next part. And suddenly there was a rattling. I, I don't know about you, but in my spirit, in, in, my, in my offices, this thing was building in my spirit, and I was starting to type it all out. This thing started, and I'm telling you, I could hear the rattling. And I felt like there's a suddenly that's coming on the earth. There's a suddenly that's coming to our nation. I, I believe God's people are about rising up. I think there's an army rising up and saying, you know what? We won't be silenced, and we won't be quieted down. We got something to say. We're going to declare the word of the Lord.
because God's word needs to clear. Suddenly there was a rattling because somebody said, we need the breath of God to breathe again. If you're in this house and you're saying, you know what? I want God to breathe. I need God to breathe in Hanover. I need God to breathe in New Oxford. I need God to breathe in Westminster. I need God to breathe in East Berlin. I I need God to breathe in Thomasville. York needs the breath of God. Uh, Lancaster needs uh, the breath of God. Uh, God wants to move in Hampstead. Uh, God wants to move. Oh, I'm talking about all. I'm talking about your house uh, and where you live, uh, Upper Adams. Uh, I I don't know where you might be, but I'm telling you, God wants to breathe. Uh, God wants to blow. Uh, God wants to move. Uh, I feel like. I feel like something's happening. Blow, mighty breath of God. Oh, do you understand that when you're singing? I I said, do you understand when you're singing, you're not just making a song, you're making a declaration? How many are ready for the breath of God to move in your land? How many are ready for the breath of God to breathe once again? Uh, See, here's what I heard in my spirit. Uh, I I heard people with COVID dying saying, I can't breathe. Uh, I heard the cry of George Floyd that said, I can't breathe. Uh, I said, God, what are you saying? God said, I can't breathe. Uh, I can't breathe uh, until somebody prophesies uh, the breath of heaven. But if you join me today, I believe the breath uh, of the living God is going to move in this land. Stand with me all over the place. We're going to sing it. We're going to declare it. We're going to decree the breath of the living God. Blow. Blow, mighty breath of God. Blow, mighty breath of God. Breathe upon this place. You ready? You ready? My God. Go for it. Come on, declare this, declare this, declare it. Mighty breath of God. Can you sing it? Can you declare it? Upon this place. We need your breath. We need your breath, God. Oh, mighty breath of God. Mighty breath of God. Come on, holy. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on. Mercy. Streams of mercy. Come on, Jesus. Flowing down. Holy Ghost, come. Light of heaven all around. Come on, come on, come on, God. Come on, God. Jesus, so blow, oh, mighty breath of God, mighty breath of God. Come on, God, come here, Lisa. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, breath of God. Come on, breath of heaven. Come on, breath of heaven. Come on, breath of heaven.
Let your wind blow. right in here. Come on. Come on. Right here. Right here. God is breathing. That's really good. When a person is losing life, you might come on a scene of an emergency and somebody is beginning to expire. What's the first thing they do? CPR. It's called cardiopulmonary resuscitation. That means the heart first, then the lungs. Before the breath of God can be exhaled, the heart has to be transformed. God is transforming hearts this morning. Allowing you to have the breath of God come in so that you can exhale heaven everywhere you go. God wants to move. If you're in this room this morning and you need God to breathe on a situation, if you're in this room this morning and you need God to move in your family, your heart, your home, whatever it might be, we're going to sing this one more time. I need my prayer team. Jonathan, come on. Some of you guys, come on. Help us out right now. I feel Jesus in the room. We're going to begin to sing this. And as we do, oh, spiritual CPR is happening. There's a move of God that's taking place. Cap, you good? You have something for now, as we're getting ready, my prayer team's gathering. Help her out, Dave, real quick. Um, the Lord has really been speaking to me about His His will, and I've been talking to my children about that with not just doing like small individual tasks, but in seeking out the will of their Father and practicing that in our home, but also in the kingdom. And so like um, the very last verse in the entire Old Testament is about the hearts of fathers turning back to their children and ch children turning back to their fathers. Oh, and um, in that verse, when I think about what is the will of the father, his will is that all will be saved. His will is that the hearts of his children would turn to him and that his, his heritage would pass on to his children. And what is his will is that that, that we would do what he called us to do in preaching the gospel and in sharing the heart of the Father with the people around us. And so I just want to pray that and I want to speak that to you guys, that, that the will of the Father would be in your heart and that you would know his heart towards you and that your heart would turn towards him and that his heart would turn, just that there would be a turning of hearts within, within his people and, and that we would go out seeking to do the will of the Father. And so, Lord, I just, I proclaim that and I prophesy that, Lord God. I speak it forth, Lord Jesus, that there would be a turning of hearts, 
that there would be a turning of hearts, Lord God, and that we, Lord God, would not just seek out small, small things, Lord God, but we would seek the will of the Father, Lord, that we would seek to, to glorify your name. You told us and when we pray that we should, um, that we should, it says, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. And so we just seek that out, Lord God. We seek the will of you, Lord God. We seek the will of the Father, which is for healing. It says that you forgive our iniquities and you, you, you heal all of our diseases. And so, Lord, we just pray for that, and I just speak that out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. There's a place right now, man, I'm feeling like the heart of the Father just connecting with his children. We've got, listen to me, we can't be silent any longer. There's not a generation in this room that's not represented. And whether it's from the youngest to the oldest, we have a voice. And God is simply saying, who would partner with me? I look for a man to stand in the gap. Who would partner with me? Who would declare the word of the Lord? Listen, when you're driving home today, as you're passing through your, your, your community, start declaring the word of the Lord. It's a drive-by declaration. <laughs> you can do that. Roll your window down if you have to and declare the word of the Lord and declare God's goodness. When you're shopping, when you're out on the street, wherever you are, start declaring, God, let your goodness fall in Hanover. Let your goodness come upon your people. It's the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. Let's declare his goodness. Let's declare his grace. Let's declare his mercies. Uh, let's, let's remit the sins of our nation and let's believe God that this is the season of the greatest move of God that you have witnessed in your lifetime. God, I'm glad to be alive on a day like today. I'm glad to be your child on a day like today. We're going to sing. If you want prayer, you're invited to come. If not, thanks for being with us. God bless you. Love one another on your way out. We're declaring His goodness. Sing it. It's your you